Hello and welcome to the CVCS Athletics Podcast. This is episode 12 and I am your host, Grady Sanchez. Today is Thursday, December 7th, and we have a great show for you today. On the show, we have the results from last week, the upcoming schedule, and we are getting back to our interviews with soccer players Ethan Van Dusen, Grace Artist, and we are going to have the assistant varsity soccer coach Noah Cook in the showroom today. Thank you all for listening to the CVCS Athletics Podcast. Please give us a follow, a like, a subscribe, and a rating here on the show. You can find us on all major podcast streaming services such as Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcast. Also visit the CVCS Podcast Network website at cvcs.org backslash podcast for all the shows by other faculty members, chapels, and students. We are going to get right after it with the results from last week. So many games, so many good hard-fought battles on the field and the court. Last week, the boys' varsity basketball team took on Edison with a loss 66-55, to a close battle. Then the girls' basketball team took on Downey. They lost 53-47. to The girls' soccer team played Crean Lutheran. They lost 2-0. The boys' basketball team took on La Habra. They lost 64-56. to Then the girls' basketball team took on Woodbridge. They lost 62-52. to The boys' soccer team on Friday last week took on Sage Hill. They lost 9-1. to The girls' soccer team took on Grace Brethren. They won 3-2. to The boys' basketball team then played Woodbridge on Friday, and they lost 60-53. The girls' soccer team took on Sage Hill this past week. They tied 2-2. The boys' soccer team played Sage Hill again. They lost 6-1. And then the boys' basketball team took on Godinas, and they won 65-42. Early in the season, getting all the jitters out, we look forward to seeing you guys improve over the time on the courts. And now for the upcoming schedule, the girls' soccer team plays December 7th, Thursday against Tarbot Vitora at home at Asensia Park. The boys' varsity basketball team is playing in a tournament. They play two to-be-announced teams at home Friday and Saturday. Then the boys' soccer team takes on Webb at home at Asensia on Tuesday, December 12th. Also on December 12th, we have the girls' soccer team playing Webb at Webb. Then we have the girls' basketball team takes on Santa Margarita, and the boys' JV basketball team takes on Sage Hill on an away game. Good luck, everybody, on your games this week. Go get them and play hard. On the show this week, we have varsity soccer assistant coach and my good friend Noah Cook. Noah is an integral part of our staff as the RISE teacher here on campus. He builds all sorts of relationships with his students and even the students he does not have in his class. Knowing him personally, I can attest to this young man's spirit and undying service to our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the modern day Renaissance man as he fancies fancies himself a long book to read, helps his students in all subjects, whether it's math, Bible, history or science and all grade levels too, freshman through senior so he's got to know all the stuff and he is one of the most athletic faculty members we have here on campus he is an avid golfer we enjoy going out to san clemente muni and playing with each other over there and he also steps in to soccer practice puts on one of the jerseys and is the extra man hanging in there with high schoolers he is married and has a son named levi and oh. Congratulations to Noah. He has another one on the way, so his life is just going to get that much busier. (laughs) Jesus definitely has him in the right place here at CVCS, and I am honored to have him on the show this week. Noah, thank you so much for being here, and thank you for all all that you do for the students and the athletes we have here on campus. Mr. Sanchez, that's quite the intro, brother. I appreciate that. (laughs) Thank you for having me. (laughs) Of course. What a great way to start off the fall season with our first interview. Uh, Can you just start off with how has your experience been here at CVCS as both a teacher and as a coach? Yeah, um, I think it's been so life-giving to myself and my family. I started out not teaching in private school, and I think just seeing the academic and social-emotional needs of students, I found it really hard to address that properly without uh, mentioning our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and and sharing what the gospel has to offer. So being in a, a setting where you can kind of have the hard conversations and, and be honest with what's going on, but also give 
like we said, uh, an eternal solution to that has just been so awesome. And, you know, getting to know teachers like you who have, you know, passion for their pedagogy. But like I mentioned at the beginning of the year, I think our school operates so well because you care about students as human beings uh, more than you care about math per se. And that's not to say you don't care about math. It's just like, you know, you do it because you love developing students into disciples of Christ. And I think being on a team where that's kind of the mission has just been awesome. I'm just so lucky to be a part of it. So, yeah, thank you for all that you do. When I was going through like the job hunt and getting my time here over at CVCS, what a beautiful blessing it was to be here. One of the things that my mom had said to me was just like, hey, you have a ministry and it's through school and it's through baseball and you don't really know what these kids are going to come with. It's a Christian school, but I can't say that all of your students will be followers of Christ just right out the gate. And so me, I was thinking about going to public school and be like, man, I can save, I can save more. Yeah. And then she's like, but there's, there's more to be had and yeah. you can speak more openly about it with having a Christian school behind your name and the kids are more susceptible to accepting Christ and making that life change mm-hmm. and kind of being the role model day in and day out. And I get a lot of the questions from the students. Like I teach solving for X five times a day and they're like man like this is the most boring thing on the planet like math yeah. come on guy <laughs> yeah aren't you bored and my response is always like yeah like i'm good at math i can teach math but it's not necessarily all about it it's about my relationships with you and that's what pretty much gets me through the day yeah and so that being able to have those conversations with christ in the middle of it is just it's it matters so much to me and like my success here as a as a teacher yeah. Uh, and then can you just give a little bit of insight on what the RISE program does here at CVCS and um, and like the work that you do with the students? Could could you just give some insight on to <clears throat> what you do and, and uh, what the program is all about? Yeah. So we are a program that operates like a uh, resource program at the public school. So we take um, our students documentation, whether it be a multidisciplinary assessment, an IEP, sometimes it's a third-party diagnosis, and we take that learning challenge that that student is faced with, and we try to um, design um, the curriculum in a way that allows these students to succeed, and it's the same curriculum that other students have. It's just school is difficult and for everybody, and when you factor in, you know, like an OHI or or something else that these students are going through in terms of academics, you know, school can be that more challenging. So we're just a team that's kind of in their corner academically, socially, emotionally. Um, we implement accommodations that they would be receiving in the public school uh, to help them succeed in the classroom. And um, oftentimes it starts with the relationships that we build. We have the luxury of working with kids in a smaller ratio Um, and I've often found that you just get to know the kids so well and you know what they like what they don't like like I think about past students like I know their Chick-fil-a order I know you know what their mom does for work I know you know their little brother what he likes to to read you know it's like you just get to know the ins and outs of these students and I think that goes a long way in the classroom and I think you do a good job of that as well like have you ever reflected on how wild it is that you have students that come into your class like on free periods or like at lunch when they don't have to be anywhere near a classroom or a textbook like you have students that choose to come in and sit in your classroom and I think that's just a testament to to your intentionality and I think it's great so yeah that's kind of what we do and I have a great team there's three of us in there including myself and yeah we just kind of hunker down each day and try to handle whatever's thrown at us but yeah I mean the reality is we're part of such an incredible team and nothing that we do would work at all if it weren't for our incredible general setting teachers so we're always so thankful for them and I wish we got the chance to thank them formally more often but yeah it's just it's an awesome collaborative process yeah yeah you build great relationships with the students you have lots of students who aren't necessarily in your program, but they hang out with you all the time and they, yeah. s- they see you in the hallways and just light up. <laughs> yeah. uh, just one of those things that 
they almost don't really hit hard enough in the teaching credential process is how important relationships are in classroom management, in like getting these students to succeed. It, it's just like math. Like these kids aren't necessarily math people, but they're yeah. still people. Yeah. And so building those relationships just makes it easier to get the content through and like getting to know the students. And here at CVCS with the average class size of 15, you get to know them a little bit better. And so they're learning just that much more. And just in those relationships, I was in downtown San Clemente this week, and I saw one of my students driving those little golf carts around down, down yeah, there. And yeah. I said, hey, hey. And then they <laughs> heard my voice and immediately said, hey, Mr. Sanchez. But it was just like so out of context for them. It yeah. took them by surprise. Yeah. But like it's kind of going back to Jesus. Like the, my, chef, my sheep will know my voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Sanchez? I, I was like, what? What are you doing here? But like. Yeah, she recognized it, and it was just like, "Oh, hey, that's that's how much time we spend with the students." Is like, even in out of context, they still hear us, and they still have a smile on our on their face when they see us, and they don't really avoid us. Yeah, if I were to ever run into my high school teachers, there's a lot that I would like. Oh, nope, yeah. I'm going to the other aisle at the grocery store. Yeah, yeah, you make a U-turn in that golf cart real quick. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shifting into the soccer world. Uh, You've been here, this is your fourth year? Yeah, I think that's right. And, and then you've been uh, coaching soccer your whole time here? Um, no, actually. I think my first year I didn't coach. My second year I did coach. And then my son was born. And I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing like with my life right now. I got to take some time to figure out how to be a husband and a father and an educator. So I took the third year that I was here off and then back coaching this year. So this is my second year coaching uh, alongside Coach Matt Wheel. So it's been great. Yes, we'll have Coach Matt on the show here in the near future. Uh, so far, the boys are are getting their their time on the field. They've won a few games. Like, how, how are they looking so far? Yeah, we have such an interesting dynamic of a lot of upperclassmen and a lot of lowerclassmen. So we have guys that, you know, are looking to compete for a league title and, you know, possibly make a run at CIF. And then we have freshmen who are just kind of wide-eyed and figuring out the X's and O's and, you know, working on their first touch and things like that. So we're really uh, leaning into our upperclassmen to just kind of extend grace but also, you know, have that uh, standard high. Um, and hopefully our underclassmen can um, develop quickly and give us a good shot at uh, a lot of good results this year. And, you know, it's so nice. We have a lot of guys that are just bought in to the program. And I think in the past we've maybe had more talented teams, but, you know, we have a lot of guys that know how to play, but also want to be coached and want to follow directions and want to work hard. And, you know, I think that goes a long way. So yeah, it's a good start to the season. We're two and two tough loss last night, but we did so many things well. I'm not sure the scoreline reflected, you know, what actually took place, which is frustrating, you know, especially for our guys to work hard for for so long of that game and then for the scoreline to look how it was. But, yeah, it's great. I mean, we have some guys that can really play, and, you know, they're taking our, our underclassmen under their wing and kind of showing them how to play the game the right way. So should be a good season. Yes, I was able to make – uh, the middle of the second stage hill game and I saw them moving on the field and some of the first touches were so good and they, they had a, a few scoring opportunities and soccer is one of those things where there's so much skill but there's also just a slight chance like it it just hits the wrong part of the shoelace and it yeah. just sails a little bit or yeah details are are so important and it's such an interesting I mean even like the the fitness aspect is like you you have to be in such good shape, but you all, you want to retain you know some sort of muscle. So it's like a really unique blend of like high endurance, but also like there's a level of physicality to it as well. So you know I, I'm not sure our fitness is where it needs to be as a team right now, and that's something as coaches we gotta gotta work on. But like you said, you know you got your shoelace tied the right. I mean it's like the the fine details really really matter. I'm sure you know baseball in terms of swinging the bat is similar, but yeah yeah I'm I'm optimistic about our season and like I said it's nice to just have guys that are bought in and are coachable and I think that can go a long way for us yeah speaking about going a long way you mentioned <clears throat> playoff runs CIF runs looking at a league title here 
what are the same some things that you guys are working towards um, as a team? Maybe some individuals. Like, how, how are you guys moving forward towards getting those wins when uh, when it starts to starts to matter here at the end of the season? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think we have a system in place that we actually kind of put together yesterday, where we've found that because we have a lot of underclassmen and some guys that are still learning the game, we not we might not possess the ball as much as. Um, some of the other teams in our league, but as we saw yesterday, I mean, if we can just stay disciplined and compact defensively, like we'll have chances going forward. Um, I think in the first game against Sage Hill, it was tough because we just went down so much so early that it was hard to, to crawl, to climb back. And, you know, coach and myself put a game plan in place. that was like, you know, we're going to sit tight defensively. We're not going to chase in their half. They want to possess with their back four. That's fine. You know, we're going to sit there and we're going to be disciplined in our own half. And we were, we were so compact defensively. And I think, um, despite the scoreline in the second half, we kind of lost sight of what we were trying to do. And that was reflected in the scoreline. But at the end of the game, you know, we kind of mentioned that's going to be a blueprint for us moving forward is that, compact shape defensively and we're going to have chances to go forward and we'll adjust that depending on who we're playing but yeah I mean I think that's going to be a good recipe for us to to get some good results and we have some <clears throat> some guys that want to play at the next level and I think they have the talent to do that and having done that myself I think I just want to <clears throat> communicate to them that like everybody is talented at the next level everybody and there's there's little things that separate you from from the other guys and one of them is just work ethic attitude um so things you can control because uh, the reality is there's so especially in south orange county there's so many talented soccer players at such a young age and you know that difference can be your attitude your work ethic you know um so yeah just those guys that do have a desire to play at the next level kind of communicating to them how they can make that happen because yeah they they have the talent to do that and yeah, it's exciting. Can you uh, speak to your time playing soccer? High school, you played in college? I did, yeah. And, like, what what, what were some of the learning blocks that you had to go through? What were some of the things that you take away from your time playing and then maybe some of the things that you try to pass on to your players being a coach now? Yeah, I played at a small Christian school in high school and <clears throat> honestly didn't take it that seriously until – maybe my sophomore, junior year, maybe my even my junior year, we had a good team and, you know, I had coaches coming up to me after the games and that was so new to me. I, I didn't have the chance to play as much club soccer as, as other um, players did just financially. It, it was a lot. Uh, so high school was kind of my first exposure to that scene. And yeah, I think <clears throat> I quickly realized that, you know, you have to work so hard and things I wish I had done in high school was just created better habits. Like I said, I played at a small school and I think my junior and senior year, I was trying to do too much. And, and then when I went and played in college, it was like, wow, these guys are just as good as I am, if not better, you know, and that's everywhere in the locker room. I looked, I was like, man, there's so much talent here. Whereas in high school, I feel like the gaps can be larger. Um, so that took <clears throat> just kind of a shift in mindset. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, like, man, everyone has a good first touch. Everyone can hit a good ball. You know, everyone can turn, you know, on a half turn and and explode in the other direction. It was like things that maybe I was only able to do at my high school, you know, everyone was doing. And so it was a bit of an adjustment. But, yeah, I think once you – if you have the right attitude and, and you want to learn and you want to be coached, um, that becomes the norm now is that speed of play and you kind of adjust and get used to it. And, you know, your body's also kind of developing too as, you know, as a freshman and you could be playing against a redshirt senior who's like 23 and just looks like he could be your uncle, you know, and it's like, okay. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I really enjoy it. And, and soccer is something that I think I'll always enjoy to play. I try to keep my fitness at a level that I can always kind of go out and just play and have fun. Um, I think I was talking to Coach Wheel about how, you know, soccer might be one of the only things where when I'm playing it, I'm not thinking about anything else. It's like I'm not thinking about, you know, finances, work, you know, strained relationships, anything. I'm just, like, focused on soccer, and it's such a nice thing to have. And <clears throat> I think I see that in some of our students where – 
they just love the competitive aspect and it's almost an escape from from what's going on or if you had a bad day you know you can just lace them up and and have fun so yeah it's been it's been really great and I hope that some of our players get to experience that at the next level yeah yeah just the batting cage was always my safe haven whether it was a good day or a bad day it was just yeah like, let's go hit some baseballs and yeah. everything's gonna be all right yeah and then kind of speaking to playing at that next level high school yeah talent you you can see talent mm-hmm. it's there's definitely a player or two <laughs> on each team where it's just like yeah that guy is different yeah and then in college just nope yeah it's like yeah it's similar in a way where it's that one or two guys that make the difference but the other supporting cast are such quality as well it's like i mean even at the professional level like if you look at you know barcelona's teams you know during their you know dominant era it was like all those players were world class but it was like messi or xavi or iniesta where it was like okay that guy's different but that's not saying that the other eight players are like world class it's just they're different and yeah, in college it was like that as well, where everyone was good. But we always had that one or two guys. It was like, yeah, that's still different. Yeah. 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 And then in my college time, I'm, I'm on the podcast. It's always audio, so like I am not tall. I am like five seven. <laughs> and in the baseball world, like that Aaron Judge, Jose Altuve photo, yeah, like yeah. that was Jose Altuve. <laughs> and I'm playing. Yeah. Everybody else around me is, yeah. is Aaron Judge. So. For my my game, it was just like how many like I got to do everything right and yeah. put myself to a higher level because yeah. like I was talented, it was there, but when you don't have the same natural ability yeah. or those those God given traits, like yeah. you got to do everything right. Yeah, and if you don't, like there goes your playing time. So like, yeah. in my own case, it was that's how I was held accountable. Like if I want to play, I got to put in the work. Yeah. Yeah. The things you can control, you really got to devote time to and be intentional about, because there are some guys who can just, you know, get out of bed and it's just there, you know, and, but the reality is for a lot of us, that's not how it works. You have to really train and, you know, the thing, like I said, the things you control, you, you got to make sure that you're doing those things the right way. So, I mean, you're not like a short guy. You're like, I mean, like what's the average American I mean, I'm height? A, I'm like an average height <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the athletics world. Yeah. And Aaron Judge is like an anomaly. I feel like Jose Altuve is like a more normal height than Aaron Judge. I guess for the average Joe on the street, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're playing at a MLB high, athlete. high athletic level, it's it's a uh, fair point. Yeah, because yeah. everybody there is just okay, cool. Yeah. Here. Six one, okay, next guy, six two, next guy's yeah, true. five ten, five eleven, man, like those, those yeah. three or four inches like make a whole world of difference. It's funny because in soccer it's like almost an advantage to to be a little lower to the ground. Like I feel like if I was two inches shorter I'd be better. Mm. Whereas for other sports that might not be the case. So it might be unique in that way as well. I guess depending on what position you're playing, but yeah, by and large I'm not sure height's like a huge advantage in the the soccer world that's encouraging for all those uh, <laughs> yeah not so vertically gifted players out there, <laughs> there you go yeah soccer yeah I there you go shot, yeah yeah most uh, definitely kind of wrapping up here like we said we we had mentioned christ throughout the beginning and and throughout the show um our position here at cvcs is is unique we get to mention christ without having to hesitate we we mention him because he is the center of our education he's the center of our <coughs> athletics he is the center of of every teacher and every person we have here on campus um, how how have you used your position to help nurture the that relationship with christ with our student athletes that's a that's a great question um i think i just try to put that thought in their mind i think it was before our first or second game and this is something that's been on my heart for a long time. Like, if you're going to do something, but it's not going to reflect and honor Christ, like, why are we doing it? So I told the guys, hey, you know, we want to go out and we want to win this game, like, bad. But if we do it in a way that's not honoring and doesn't reflect, you know, ourself, our school, or our Savior well, then, you know, wh- what are we really doing? And I think you can apply that same concept of a soccer match to your life in general. You know, it's like whatever you're doing um if it's not honoring and glorifying your savior you know you might want to take a step back and say you know am i doing the right thing or you know is there a different way i should be doing it and and this is something that i've learned the hard way you know in high school i was you know i wasn't different than any other you know 17 year old kid i had frustrations i had a temper and 
yeah, and I think if I were to watch myself play in high school, I'd be a little disappointed in some of the things that I did, knowing that, you know, I'm not really honoring or glorifying my Savior right now. And, yeah, I think that all starts with relationship. I've had a lot of people preach to me, especially at a young age, and if I didn't have that rapport, that respect, it was like, unfortunately, I'm not sure I really gave it much time or attention. And so I think just being, you know, intentional with my relationship with the boys and my students and, you know, letting them know that I care about them and, and I think if they've been in relationship with people who aren't in relationship with Jesus, they can tell the intentionality is different. Like, man, this person really cares about me. Like, not just when I'm doing good, not just when, you know, it makes them look good when they're uh, advocating for me. Like, this person's, like, really bought into me in my situation. Like, why is that? And, you know, I've had people literally ask me that. Like, why do you do that? Like, why do you listen to me? Why do you advocate for me? Like, why? And the answer is because I'm called to do that because you're, you know— a daughter and son of Christ. And, you know, the reality is we're all broken. And, you know, I just try my best to communicate to them that they're so valued and, and that the way we treat each other is, is of the utmost importance. And I feel like sometimes that can get muddled in like a heavy competition, you know, where it's like, all right, off the field, you know, we're chilling. My language is fine. My attitude is fine. And then when you put, you know, two goals and a soccer ball in the, in the mix. It's like that kind of goes all, all out the window sometimes. And, and I get that. There's a competitive drive that can sometimes get the best of us. But, you know, trying to, to explain to these students that, look, Coach Cook wants to win this game more than anybody. But if we do it and we don't honor and glorify Christ in the process, like, was it really worth it? And, you know, just giving them things to think about like that as well. But, and luckily we do have a lot of guys who are, you know, really bought in where <clears throat> I think in the past maybe, you know, that was more of an issue and some things we had to devote more time to. Whereas I feel like this year we're just we're just such a solid unit and, and the guys really respect and care about each other. So it's really, really a fun thing to be a part of. And I think it starts with our coach. You know, I've I've been coaching with Matt now for this is my second year, but I've been around him and, and the training sessions for a long time and just the way that he treats the boys and, you know, communicates. I, I feel like it starts with him. He's he's very uh, even keel. Um, I think he has a firm understanding of what's most important, and I think that trickles down into, like, our our culture as a whole. So, yeah. That's great. Love it, just being able to use – our position and like we, we are as coaches as teachers we are that model of Christ for them and it's it's humbling that they look at us in that in that manner and sometimes I have to step back and be like oh my gosh I just blew it yeah oh yeah yeah it's a uh, it's a messy process and I think it just points back to like hey you know I'm here for you I, you know I'll always do what I can for you but I'm also imperfect but you know there's someone who's not there's somebody who is perfect and you know, I think just keep pointing them back to that is, you know, there is somebody that will never let you down. And as much as I'd like to think that I won't do that, I mean, that's not the reality because I am a man and I make mistakes. So, yeah, I think it is a humbling process. And so there's sometimes you're like, well, I really beef that one. But yeah, I'd say by and large, we're so blessed to, to be here. And sports are just fun, man. Like to be oh, yeah. able to yeah, like sometimes I'm getting paid for this. This is incredible. Like I got like like you mentioned earlier, I'll put a bib on because I'm like I'm trying to play, you know. And yeah, it's just I feel so grateful to have the opportunity to do that again this year. And you know, I hope the boys enjoy having me out there. So because I enjoy being out there. Oh yeah, you do. We are thankful for you. We're grateful for your presence here on campus, on the teams, in the classroom. Everything that you do is is definitely Christ centered, and and you exemplify that model and we're so so happy and i gained so much out of our relationship as as colleagues as friends as as a lot of things and and just your time and your presence here has really helped me grow as a as a man as a teacher as an educator and as a father like i come away from our conversations like a changed person and i gained so much from you so thank you for being on the show thank you for your time. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for all that you do. I'm just eternally grateful for you and your, uh, and your impact on my life thus far. So, so Noah, thank you for coming on the show. Wow. Thank you so much for those kind words. I could say the same for you. And yeah, I look forward to, to, uh, being in friendship with you in the future. And it's just so, so nice to know that, you know, you're just a couple doors down and yeah, 
Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. Of course. Until next time. <laughs> yeah. On the show this week, we have junior soccer players Ethan Van Dusen and Grace Artis. Ethan is a star on the soccer field and is one of the leaders on the team. He has made an immediate impact as a freshman, and as a junior, he has kept up his skill set to lead his team to winning games. He is someone that the other players look up to and is continuing to grow as a young man in a leadership role. Grace is a wonderful, Grace is a wonderful young lady who always has a smile on her face. She plays goalie and is a leader of the backfield. She was a part of the 2021 league championship team, and they made a big run to the CIF playoffs, hoping to do it again this year. I have had the pleasure of having both of them in my math class for, their, for two years, and it is great to see how much they've grown since their freshman year. I'm excited to have you both on the show today. Thank you for being here, and let's get started off with how has your experience been here at CBCS? Um, I've had a great experience here at CBCS. I originally was going to go to San Clemente my freshman year and then I transferred kind of like last minute and I think that was like one of definitely one of like my most altering points in my life because my life has gotten just so much better and I, I feel like I've gotten so much closer to God and my friends here are amazing so it's been great. That's awesome to hear, Ethan. Yeah. yeah, I would say I came here in middle of eighth grade and from public school, a ton of kids. It was definitely challenging to get used to the smaller atmosphere at CBCS, but I feel like I kind of grew into it. And starting freshman, I had some old friends that joined that I've been friends with for years, so that kind of helped. And but yeah, as far as soccer goes, it's I know it's not as good as like public school and stuff, but being able to start on varsity as a freshman and like play with bigger kids instead of playing frost off or JV and getting to varsity junior senior year, it's definitely helped me grow and learn how to play against bigger players earlier than junior senior year. So yeah, very cool. So here, uh, some of the teams are only varsity teams like soccer and then baseball. We have three levels but for a freshman coming in and playing and you uh, I want to say when they were posting Instagram posts for Ethan it was he always led an assist or he had the most goals in that game and so as a 14 year old or as a 15 year old going up against 18 and 19 year olds as a freshman like that says kudos to how talented you are and how you came in and then Grace that's great to hear that originally thinking about public school coming here and like the atmosphere and the the athletics and the academics has um, made a world of difference in your own life. Uh, switching over to soccer, uh, season has started. You guys are about four or five games into the season so far. What are some of the things that have gone well? What are some of the things that you guys are working towards so that when you guys get to the end of the season, you make that final playoff run? Well, I think we've got a lot of good freshmen this year that have added to the team and um, I think the more we practice and play um, the better will our team the better chemistry we'll have um, but one of my goals is like just to get a shutout for me because so far I've gotten scored on but that's what we're just trying to work on is just a shutout um, but I think so far we're doing pretty good. Um, we've only lost one game and then just one tie and won the rest. But um, for the start, I think I think we're doing pretty good. Very awesome. Yeah. Ethan? yeah, I think for us, I think we're still trying to find our identity. I feel like the last two years we've lost a lot of players and stuff. And this year we're kind of depending on new people like freshmen and other players coming in. And I feel like right now – through the first four games, we're two and two, but we've had two tough ones playing against a good team. But you can definitely see the difference from last year and this year because the team we lost to the last two games, we only lost one nothing and then nine one and six one. So I feel like as a team, we're still trying to figure out what what's going to happen this year. Meaning like who's going to start and like how we're going to play. Like are we just going to be a team that just kicks the ball and chases and try and find a goal in a breakaway or are we going to possess the ball and stuff. And that's what I'm trying to get our team to do is possess the ball because we want to keep the ball. You don't want to chase the ball. It's not how you win games. And I feel like 
for me, I definitely want to win league. I feel like we can because I think other teams lost seniors too. So it's definitely can be competitive, but yeah, we'll see. That's great to hear. We had your assistant coach on this morning or today on the show, and he just brought some insight in, into uh, changing philosophies, how you guys have grown as players and what you guys are looking forward to. So there's a lot of hope, a lot of things to aspire to on both ends, the girls team and the boys team to make that final playoff run and win that CIF championship because that's always the goal. Um, lastly, how has your team, how has your classmates and the faculty here helped shape your walk with Christ or influence in those roles as mentor or as friends guiding you along that path? Um, I'd say definitely um, being at a private Christian school and just kind of having everyone um, like being Christian and like just building off like Christian values really brings the team together and um, and I can't think. Uh, <laughs> it's it's it's. <laughs> you can always come back and add to the conversation. Um, Ethan, why don't why don't you take over? Yeah, I feel like it's interesting because when you look at club and stuff like. Coaches are a lot harder on you, in my opinion. And like, like if we lost nine to one in club, we would get screamed at and yelled at. We would probably run for the next two hours. And I feel like there's a big difference because here we lose nine one and we just pray and yeah. say let's figure it out tomorrow in practice. So I guess trans transitioning from club to high school kind of shows me like I think my coaches care about me more as a person instead of soccer player. Because club, it's it's more developing a winning culture and players and here it's more like developing players and I mean our soccer program is pretty small so I don't think we're necessarily trying to develop a winning culture but we're trying to develop players and men so I feel like Coach Cook and Coach Will have really shown that they care about us and they want the best for us as a soccer player and as a person so yeah I think it's definitely helpful to have coaches like that. Yeah I, w I think you're not only learning more about your skills on the soccer field, but also more about yourself and how, like, you're working with other people and also kind of what Ethan said, like, we pray after every game and before every game. And I think that also just strengthens all of our relationships with God. And that's just one of the many benefits of coming here. So... Yeah, you guys said it all. It's excellent to get an insight so early in the season into soccer. Uh, boys and girls will have some more of your teammates on and as the season progresses, but thank you so much. You guys, I love having you in my class. I love seeing you guys on campus. I've been to parts of both of your games, and it's great to see you guys act on the field, like seeing who you guys are just outside of crunching the numbers in class. So uh, keep on working hard. You guys got it. And I'm excited to see how far you guys make it here in the future. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. And that's a wrap for the show this week. Thank you all for listening to the show. Thank you for being here and spending your time with us here at the CVCS Athletics Podcast. Thank you to Noah, to Ethan, and Grace for coming on the show and providing such great insight into the athletics program we have here. Just a reminder to give CVCS Athletics Podcast a follow, a like, subscribe, and a rating. You can find us on all major podcast streaming services such as Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Please visit the CVCS Podcast Network website at cvcs.org backslash podcast for all the shows for CVCS. And that's it for us this week. Eagles country, let's fly. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. 
On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.